Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video. Wirecast and OBS, or Open Broadcast Software, are probably the two most popular live streaming programs that will allow you to create really professional looking live streams and send them to places like YouTube Live or Facebook Live. I've done a heap of videos on this channel talking about how to do it or running you through how to do it with Wirecast. But we always get a lot of questions from people asking about OBS as well. So in this video, we're gonna cover everything you need to know about Wirecast and OBS to help you make the best decision and work out which one is right for you. All right, so to start with, there is a lot of common ground between the two programs. Both of them will let you live stream to YouTube Live, Facebook Live, Twitch, and a heap of other live streaming platforms. They'll both let you use things like chroma key or green screen. They'll both let you apply effects and resize and control your output image, um, put color effects on. They'll also let you monitor and adjust your audio levels have multiple camera inputs and multiple screen sharing options as well, whether you just wanna share a whole screen or crop down to a specific area or window on your screen. So there's a lot of common ground or common features between the two programs, but probably the biggest difference, or not probably, the biggest difference between the two is the price tag. OBS is open source, or it's free, costs you nothing. Wirecast Studio will cost you $495 US for the studio version. For the pro version, it's up around $999. So that alone is a huge difference. Now what we're gonna focus on in this video is Wirecast Studio. So the $495 version, not Wirecast Professional or Wirecast Pro, which is the $995 version. And the reason that we're not gonna talk about the free version of Wirecast, Wirecast Play, is because it's limited to YouTube only, and there's a heap of features that are missing from that version as well. So we're gonna compare professional versions or, or platforms that you could use to produce professional live streams to both Facebook and YouTube and a heap of other platforms. So we're focused on Wirecast Studio and OBS. So what we're gonna run through here is eight things in total, four things that you need to know about OBS and four things that you need to know about Wirecast Studio to help you make the best decision for you. So we'll start with OBS first. And the first point is that OBS doesn't have any built-in presets for live streaming, which means that you really have to know what you're doing or look at other tutorials around online to find the correct settings for the live stream that you wanna produce. So YouTube Live and Facebook Live both have their own ideal quality settings or, or live streaming settings for the different resolutions that you're gonna be broadcasting at. So the settings and the bit rates for 720p stream is gonna to be totally different to a 1080p stream. So what this really means is it's not just a beginner entry level, open the software, choose YouTube or choose Facebook and hit go live. You will need to understand the things like the bit rate, the resolution, the keyframing, your audio quality settings in order to get the best result through for your system, for your internet connection, and for the platform that you're streaming to. Wirecast, on the other hand, has a heap of live streaming presets built in. So once you pick either Facebook or YouTube, the next step is picking your quality settings. There's just presets for everything, and you can only pick settings that are recommended by YouTube or by Facebook, for example. So for someone new coming into live streaming through Wirecast, it's much easier to get up and running without needing to go and research the correct bit rates and resolutions and everything to get great results. Number two for OBS is that it's not CPU intensive, which means it's not a real resource hog on your system. You can run it on older or less powerful systems, or you can maximize the power and do other things. Like a lot of people use OBS for live streaming their gaming. Now gaming is a very, computer intensive task. So having the ability to live stream that with a program that's not gonna take up a heap of those resources from the gaming is a pretty powerful thing. Wirecast on the other hand is typically a very CPU or GPU as well intensive program. So if you're gonna be live streaming on a less powerful computer, or if you're gonna be doing a lot of things on your computer at the same time as live streaming, like gaming, or maybe even running through some 4K video editing tutorials while you're live, then that may be better suited, depending on your system and your setup for OBS over Wirecast. Number three for OBS is the plugins. There are a heap of additional plugins you can get to really add some cool new features and functionality to open broadcast software. So while OBS is a complete live streaming solution straight out of the box or straight after installing, having the ability to install plugins and really customize the software to suit you is a really powerful thing. 
And obviously because it's open source software and because it's a popular program, there are lots of people writing plugins for it. Number four for OBS is something that I think is pretty powerful. It's a new feature that's come in fairly recently and it allows you to click and drag and scale and crop all of your graphic elements or your live stream elements, so your cameras, your, your screen shares, any text, right from the preview monitor or from the preview window. In Wirecast, you've got similar features, but in order to get full control over your shot, you're doing everything manually with sliders instead of just being able to click and drag or click and crop your video elements to get them how you want them to look. It's not having to rely on sliders and advanced tools just to make some basic changes to the way that your live stream is going to look is a pretty powerful tool in OBS. All right, so they were the four things you need to know from OBS. Now we're gonna look at the four things you need to know for Wirecast. And the first is having the ability to output to multiple sources. Now, this is a really, really powerful thing. Not only will it give you the ability to do things like live stream to Facebook and YouTube at the same time, even if you're just looking to output to one source like YouTube, it means that you can add a second source to YouTube, like a backup stream, so that you're actually pushing out two live streams in case something happened to one of them, you can send a backup stream as well. So even if you're not interested in broadcasting live to multiple online platforms like Facebook Live or YouTube Live, you can also set up multiple output options for local disc recording as well, which means that you could record your live stream in a really high quality for a backup or for archive. You could also push out a lower quality or specific settings that you're gonna release your videos later on another platform. So that's pretty powerful and it's something that I use all the time with a lot of my government live streams. I'll record one as a really high quality version for archive or for backup. And I'll also save out a lower quality MP4 file exactly to their requirements that they can then use immediately after the live stream for their local intranet. So that feature alone is really invaluable as far as I'm concerned because it, it really renders and saves everything on the fly. Number two for Wirecast is the level of control that you have over your entire live stream and all of your video assets as well. Just simple things like if you're adding in a video file, you can set it to start at a certain point. You can set it to loop once that file is finished. You can set it to disappear once that file is played. You can set an out point so that when it hits there, it loops back around to the end point. You can really get so much control over your video assets and over everything to do with your live stream. While you can do some of those things in OBS, there's nowhere near the same amount of control that you will have in Wirecast. Number three for Wirecast, and if you've ever used Wirecast and OBS, then I'm sure you're with me on this one, but Wirecast is much easier to set up and use straight out of the box. If you've never used either one before and someone gave you OBS and someone gave you Wirecast, you would be able to get up and running much quicker without having to Google things or look in help with Wirecast. It's so much more intuitive, the interface is much easier to use, and as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's in a much more logical layout. In OBS, you've got to create a heap of scenes and you've got to manually add everything in and control everything. In Wirecast, while you still have to do that to some degree, it's a much easier, much simpler process. So where I feel this really comes into play is if something went wrong while you're live, which is worst case. So say you switch from one camera to another camera and for whatever reason, you're not getting any audio through. It's much easier to pinpoint the problem and to quickly fix the problem, in my opinion, in Wirecast than it is in OBS. But really, if you set everything up and have a procedure for your live stream and you test everything before you go live, then hopefully you won't have any issues. But if you do have issues, much easier to fix and to pinpoint in Wirecast, in my opinion. And number four for Wirecast is the virtual camera output and virtual microphone output option. This is a really, really powerful feature that allows you to output everything from Wirecast as, as if it was going live into a virtual webcam. That virtual webcam you can set up and activate as if it was an actual webcam or an actual microphone that you plugged into your computer. So what this means is you can use an app like Skype but instead of just having a webcam, you're having everything that you're pushing through from Wirecast. So if you wanna take your Skype calls or Skype interviews to the next level and bring in screen sharing and bring in titles and animations and other video clips, you can do all of that and control it all from Wirecast, but you're outputting through Skype instead of a live stream. So that's not just limited to Skype, you can use that on any application where you can use a webcam. So that is an awesome tool and an awesome feature as far as I'm concerned. So there's eight things you need to know about Wirecast and OBS to help you make the best decision to work out which one is right for you. 
grab the 30 day trial version of Wirecast, give it a go, compare it yourself to OBS and work out which one works best for your workflow. Personally, for me, the answer is Wirecast, but it does come with a much higher price tag than OBS. So you've really got to make up your own mind on that one. If you found this video helpful, we'd really appreciate a thumbs up and make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you wanna check out the gear that I use to live stream solo, then click the link on screen now. I'll see you soon.